Good afternoon, y'all. It's Ned over my Philippine dreams. N to the E to the D over at MPD. Coming at you from Dumaguete City, the city of gentle people, Negros Oriental, the Philippines. We're going to be continuing our groundbreaking series on trying to understand the cultural psychology of the Philippines. And as I mentioned previously, it's important for us as expats, as foreigners living in a foreign land, being strangers in a strange land, to try to come to um, some understanding of why Filipinos do the things they do or in some cases don't do the things that they don't do. So, in the first part of the series, we looked at some of the history of the Philippines, that its original Malay Indo settlements, the Chinese mercantile empire that had a big influence, the Spanish occupation for 333 years and 50 years of Hollywood when the Americans were here. We also looked at the role of family in the Philippines, how it's basically the backbone of the culture. Everything is done for the family. Family is paramount. And finally, in the first video, we looked at Pakikisama, which is smooth interpersonal relations. It's getting along. It's going with the flow. It's not making waves. It's doing things in an expected way. In the second video, we looked at Amor Propio, we looked at Hia, and we looked at Utang Nalo'ob. Amor Propio being love of self, basically self-esteem. In a Chinese outlook, it would be more of like face. Hia is shame. Shame is experienced when Amor Propio is violated. Either somebody violates your Amor Propio or you violate your own Amor Propio. And finally, Utang Nalo'ob, that debt of obligation. Again, with family, when it comes to trying to understand why Filipinos do some of the things they do, Utang Nalo being a debt of obligation, especially when it comes to family, is very important and plays a big role and it's an integral part of Filipino cultural psychology. And this final part of the series, actually is going to be one more video after this where we try to answer some of the questions. Some of the questions we're trying to answer is, why do Filipinos sometimes have a hard time taking responsibility for the actions? Why do they voluntarily ship themselves off for years or decades in foreign countries and send money back to support their families? Why do they invite total strangers into their home for fiesta celebrations? Why do they say yes sometimes when they mean no? And I'll put all the series, all the questions that we're going to try to be answering. And in this final part, we're going to try to answer that. We're going to add some stuff to the mix. And it's basically going to be Bahala Na, Balatsi Buyas, Crab Mentality, Colonial Mentality, and Balik Bayan Box Mentality, or as I like to call it, Balik, ba Balik Bayan Mentality. Bahala Na is basically, it translates as God willing, God's will. It's like Inshallah in Arabic. And basically what it does is it's, it's basically saying that God will take care of whatever needs to be taken care of. So there's a certain amount of fatalism involved with it. It's useful for when like there's huge tropical storms and entire cities get devastated and God will provide, God will take care and we will rebuild. Um, but it also can take, have some damaging effect on, on personal responsibility and doing the things that you need to do to take care, not just for today, but to prepare for the future. So Bahala Na can sometimes cause a bit of apathy within the culture. Balatsi Buyas, the second piece. Balatsi Buyas literally translates as onion skin. Filipinos can sometimes be, I'm not saying all the time, not speaking generally, but sometimes be very sensitive. And that's something that if you've been in the Philippines, you've definitely experienced. Crab mentality. Crab mentality is basically not wanting people to get ahead, not wanting others to, to do well. And it's pulling people down, it's trying to pull people down, it's trolling on them, call it what you will. And crab mentality is basically you got the barrel full of crabs. One crab's trying to get out. He's, he's climbing over everybody else, and the other crabs are trying to pull him back down. You can see it. Me, Michelle, Michelle and I went to a wedding on Sunday, and we saw crab mentality. It's it, and it's most perfect example. Basically, we were driving along. There was a Honda Civic in front of us that was driving really slow. So we tried to pass them, and as soon as we tried to pass them, the guy floored it so that we can, couldn't get ahead of them. I've actually seen that happen other times when trucks are driving along and another car will try to pass it, and the truck, all of a sudden, there'll be this huge spume of diesel exhaust coming out the back as he doesn't allow the guy to get ahead of him. Those are some like literal examples of crab mentality, but you can see it sometimes here in the culture. I actually think the term crab mentality was coined in the Philippines. I'm not actually sure. Again, this isn't an expert review on Filipino cultural psychology. This is me trying to stumble along and figure out why Filipinos do some of the things that they do. Next up, colonial mentality. Colonial mentality basically has to do with 
Things from outside the Philippines are better than things produced, made, or created within the Philippines. Like when you see people looking to buy a new motorcycle or a new phone, a lot of times they'll say no to local unit, which means they don't want a My Phone, they don't want a Cherry Mobile Phone, they don't want to recall a Rusi. They want something from outside, something not created within the Philippines. And this can also have an effect sometimes on Filipino self-esteem, because a lot of times they'll see people from away or foreigners or whatever in a higher light than which they see themselves, which is a damn shame. And last but not least, um, it's called Balik Bayan box mentality. I like to call it Balik Bayan mentality, because it's not just the Balik Bayan box. It's actually this idea of depending upon an immigrant population to go out, work in foreign countries, and send stuff back, money, Balik Bayan boxes, riches, all that, to the families back in the Philippines to support them. And this also can be seen, and again, a lot of this stuff has to do with sacrifice. When you're talking about some of the aspects of Filipino cultural psychology that we're talking about, it has to do with sacrifice. For example, a young, beautiful Filipina getting with an old, wrinkly foreigner so that she can get an allowance and send that money to her family to take care of her family instead of having to go overseas. That's also a part of that Balik Bayan mentality. So those are a lot of terms, that's a lot of stuff to digest, to go through. And in the final episode of this, I'm going to try to answer the questions. I might do that as a live broadcast on YouTube, because um, I'm going to have to be reading off some notes because I can't remember all this stuff. But again, I think it's important as foreigners living in the Philippines to try to understand, to, to cr decrease our stress level, to try to find some understanding of why things happen the way they do here. And it's pretty interesting because it is, it's a mishmash of all those cultures, all the history, you are what you were, and it's fascinating to me to see how this stuff plays out. All right, that's enough. I've rambled on enough. Like, dislike, subscribe, share, do all that fun stuff. And uh, until next time, this is Ned over my Philippine dreams. Take care. Do all that fun. Do all that fun. And it's pretty interesting because it, it's. A, and it's pretty interesting because it. Yeah. Whenever you want to stop honking the horn. <laughs>